Hello beautiful soul, I'm bringing you a fortnightly reading that's going to take us into a brand new decade and there's so many fabulous astrological shenanigans occurring. But first, let me say this, it's Christmas, you know whether you're into Christmas or not into Christmas, it has a big impact on us all. If you are alone at Christmas or you're feeling a bit down at Christmas or you're going through some problems at Christmas, I send you all my love. I've had many terrible Christmases in my life, I can assure you, and I promise you things will get better. And all of us, we need to reach out to people if they're on their own at Christmas, because it is a very, very challenging time. But on that note, let's get on and find out what's occurring for us, because there's some brilliant news for all of us. Here's your weekly astrology. <music> divine sensual creatures we have a lot of energy in your ninth house of adventure of exploration now no matter how set in your ways you are no matter what patterns you're fond of not only in the next two weeks but actually for the whole year you're being shaken up to explore to traverse boundaries that you didn't think possible to enter into new experiences and fundamentally interesting and evolutionary excitements all around you. You will be studying and learning and you will be possibly traveling. If you're not literally traveling, you're traveling in your mind. And it all begins this week. Well, it's probably already begun, but it's beginning again this week with the sun, the trine Uranus in your sign. Now Uranus, as you know, is shaking you up in the in your sign, so you're like, rah, you know, you're gonna feel like doing things that you've never felt like doing before. You're, you're excited about life and surprises are happening. And you know, usually you don't like surprises, but these ones are for the greater betterment of your soul. So, you know, go with the flow. There may be some excitement this week about someone coming to tra traveling to see you or you traveling somewhere, or you get the idea about what you wanna do travel-wise. The new moon in Capricorn and the solar eclipse very, very powerful, all in that same space for you. So if you've had any fears about traveling, if you've been held back in any way, you have the opportunity to release that, to surrender that, uh, and to go forward into a brand new world. That doesn't mean you have to leave anything behind necessarily, although it is a new moon. The only thing you need to leave behind is your fears and to embrace the new. You've got it in you, baby. you got it in you to go forwards and feast upon experiences you've never had. It's very exciting, so much excitement. Um, we also have, I mean, it just gets better. We've got the Sun and Jupiter joining forces. This is such an uplifting energy. And a lot of this cosmic shenanigans is making you feel more optimistic about life, having more self-belief. You know, if you're not feeling that, harness that energy, feel it in the cosmos. Just ask for it say universe help me to be optimistic help me to grow bring me adventures and we'll see what happens and then in the following week we have hold on one second mars shifting signs and it gets deep you're feeling very deep um well actually on the third of Jan january you're feeling very very deep because you're exploring what's going on in your shadow size now be watch out for uncontrollable anger watch out for feelings of vengeance because when Mars is in the eighth house, it can be quite vengeful. Allow yourself instead to plunge into the mysteries of yourself, to purge your shadows. You will also be feeling sexy as hell, potentially, and, and sort of overcome by lust and obsession. So watch out for that. Nothing wrong with that occasionally, but watch out for that. If it, I mean, make sure that it comes out in a healthy way, healthy for you, healthy for other people. Don't let your fears hijack you. Tune in to that positive, optimistic energy as you're entering the next decade. What energy do you want to take through to the next decade? What adventures do you want to have in the next decade? You know, come into your power straight away. Allow yourself to feel the power deep, deep, deep in the core of your being. That's also Mars in the eighth house. Um, we have Juno trying Venus your ruler, there is an opportunity for you to really push ahead with your career and to feel actually much more self-confident. Venus is giving you a little love boost. So, you know, allow yourself 
to let Venus love bomb you in your career zone. What do you want to change there? Do you want to fall in love with your work in a new way? Is there something you want to change about the way you approach your career? All of this energy is there. But fundamentally, really, we've also got Mercury trying Uranus in your sign on the 30th. Unexpected conversations, unexpected news, and all sorts of tantalizing possibilities for 2020. Enjoy my glorious Taurus. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon. If you want to check out your written monthly, weekly, yearly astrology, pop over to my website, michellenight.com. I'm not doing readings at the moment, but I do have a company of some of the best psychics and astrologers in the world. I've had the company for 20 years. I handpick them and they are fabulous. So I'm going to start to show you, starting now, their little videos on here. My name is Alexandra. I'm a motivational and inspirational reader. First of all, I'm psychic. I'm like a channel. I'm channeling messages as and when they just come and go. Working on the phone is much easier compared to uh, having a face-to-face -face reading. It allows me to express 100% of my skills. I pick up the phone and I need to hear the voice. They don't need to tell me anything. I don't need to hear any details from them. I just dive straight into the messages I'm getting, describing their current situation so that they get some validation that I know what I'm talking about. I'm non-judgmental and very much patient and understanding don't involve my views on the situation obviously. It's good to hear that people come back and telling me that things did happen as I predicted they would or thanking me for the advice I've given them. This is the biggest satisfaction in this work so that's the whole point, this is the whole value of what I do.